Hello, good evening, and welcome to Ion Port here on Metropolitan Television. Ion Port is proudly brought to you by the Ghana Revenue Authority, Guel Company Limited, Serene Insurance, Ghana Link Network Services, and Meridian Port Services, MPS. The show is proudly powered by the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, GPHL. Media partner on this journey of a lifetime is a business and financial times, the BNFT. If you want to have a grasp of all that transpired in the show tonight, make a date and grab the Thursday edition of the BNFT, and you'll be able to see all that happened here on the show tonight. We are streaming live on our social media pages on Facebook. We are streaming live at Ghana Port and Harbors Authority. Ghana Port and Harbors Authority. Still on Facebook, we are streaming live at Port of Tema. And on YouTube, we are streaming live at Ion Port Ghana. Ion Port Ghana. As usual, we shall be getting interactive with you. And all you have to do is send us your messages and comments ahead via our dedicated WhatsApp line 0559 0559019177. One seven seven. Now, when the time is ripe and I pick the signals from my production team, we shall activate the phone lines for you to call in and contribute to the discussion. My name is Kennedy. Mona, we are going for a quick break. We're on Bounce Back. We'll continue the show. Please do stay with us. Every now and again, Goyle makes good things happen. This time, Goyle has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Goal Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Goal Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Goal Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Goal Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goyle has that sorted. Goyle, good energy. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell God, my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is. You still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water. Or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policy that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the floods have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Suddenly my goods are on the IC covered with their marine cargo insurance policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima, tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my Contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers' compensation for all the workers on site with Serene Insurance. They will make sure they will cover your unknown tomorrow today. Serene Insurance, a new face of insurance. Call us now. MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating greater opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading block globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive. 
All right, so you're welcome back. It's now time for us to take a look at happenings in the port, of, port and shipping industry in the course of the week. And in the course of the week, there was a launch of the Transport Forum Ghana. We're going to tell you all that is about. We also uh, bring you a story in which the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, GMPC, donated some drones to the Ghana Navy to enhance maritime security and patrols of our seas and waters. Plus, the fact that we'll bring you some videos from the port of Takradi uh, to tell you some of the happenings that are ongoing there, some of the development and transport transformation that are currently ongoing there in the port of Takrad. Let's take a look at these stories and more. The Transport Forum Ghana has been launched to serve as a trade advocacy platform to specifically address contemporary issues in the transport sector. The newly created trade advocacy organization intends to influence positive change in the industry by engaging in research, critiquing policies, and extensive consultation with relevant stakeholders and authorities. According to the executives of the association, the ultimate goal of the network is to create an effective, affordable, and safe transport system in Ghana. On the road to progress, we need to flash a red light to stop business as usual. And we all know business as usual. Hence, the Transport Forum. Otherwise, we continue to pay the high price for inefficiency, lack of ethics, and economic and human cost for road accidents, for pollution, greenhouse emission. The interesting portion is, I do export. And then my, my exports get to the destination in Germany, in Canada, in USA, in China. And these same shipping lines charging us these fees here do not charge the people over there. What have you done wrong as a people? The transport forum will not be quiet on this. We will not be compromised on this. TTF is not just a forum, it's also a platform. It's a platform to engage those who are affected and those who are not. It's a platform to engage policymakers, Shippers Authority, Ghana Maritime, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Trade, on behalf of those we work for. Other trade advocacy groups present at the launch are sure to present themselves as a unified front towards creating a progressive industry that promotes the fair movement of goods and services. In this country, the mortgage and rent is killing us. Shipping lines are carriers representing their principles. There are certain charges that they are taking from importers unduly, first release, second release, and that is, is your domain. These are some of the things we need to look at to reduce the cost of doing businesses for our importers in this country. And so your organization wouldn't have been here at a different time. This is the right time. Now, you are holding any support, any prayers at time or cheap because you are the Yamanaba, Mona, the Dona, Muyimae, and into no say, most will be see Sana Mutri, Nahe and Kamwa, and ye, and into your buyer, you are the support at the time which you say, and a po, a you, Moton suffering, a baby upon your Yamanaba. The Ghana Navy and partner, the Ghana Boundary Commission, have taken delivery of two state-of-the-art surveillance drones which are intended to assist the two institutions deliver on their mandate of monitoring and securing Ghana's maritime territory. The two Delta Quad Pro are manned aerial vehicles were donated by the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation. The Deputy Chief Executive Officer in Charge of Finance and Administration at GMPC, Benjamin Kwekwa Kolache said, the donated equipment is a demonstration of the collaboration his outfit has established with stakeholders and the protection of the nation's ocean resources. Ghana National Petroleum Corporation finds all our producing oil assets within the offshore marine environment. This calls for more collaboration with the Ghana Navy and other stakeholders. I am happy to say that so far our partnership has been good and we look forward to deepening the relationship going forward. National coordinator of the Ghana Boundary Commission, Major General Emmanuel Kotia said the drones will help his outfit deliver on its mandate. We shall jointly organize monitor boundary inspection with the Ghana Navy at least as much as we can on, on, the, on sea with the Ghana Navy ship along the eastern and the western maritime domains with the maritime drones. And we are hoping that we should be able to have one before the end of the year. We would also 
ensure between the Ghana Gabandu Commission and Navy ensure that the territorial sovereignty of Ghana is always secured. Likewise, the flag officer commanding of the Eastern Naval Base, Commodore Imano Ayensu Kwafo, indicated that the drones will contribute to the fight against crimes such as piracy and illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing. The transnational nature of some of the crimes mentioned makes the surveillance of Ghana's maritime borders an imperative. It is in this context that the Commission's continuous collaboration with the Ghana Navy to improve security along Ghana's maritime borders is most appreciated. The incorporation of drones in these joint operations is both commendable and timely. We have the Harbour Master of GPH Chakwade Port, Captain Richmond Crazy. Captain, this evening we've seen the successful birthing of MV Fair Partner, which has brought two shiploaders and one echo hopper here at the new dry bulk terminal. Could you please tell us the relevance of these equipment in the operations of Takla Depots? Yeah, firstly, management of GPHA headquarters and management of Takla Depots, we are delighted to, to receive this vessel, MV Fair Partner, arriving with the game changer. The dry box terminal has been completed. A GPHA partnership with Amandi, Ghana. We've done the superstructure work with conveyor system to save the manganese, bauxite, and clinker vessels. So these ship loaders, one for manganese, one for bauxite, and one for the clinker related cargo, arrived with MV Partner. MV Fair Partner is a heavy lift carrier that loaded the cargo from Dubai to the Suez Canal to Mediterranean and we are pleased to have the vessel safely alongside this evening and we look forward to the next four days the careful discharging of the ship loaders, that's the manganese ship loader number one onto the rail system, then we do the box out one onto the rail system and then they go over. So the next four days be very careful operation to discharge this cargo from the end, from the heavy lift carrier. Then only we will use another four weeks for the installation and trying and testing to commission the project to start delivering for the shipping for the shipping line. So this is going to change the way we handle clinker, the way we handle manganese, and the way we handle bauxite in the quarry port to be a fully automated system, world class. World class, I mean world class, so that we can deliver on a type of vessels we expect. We are expecting cape size vessels, vessels over 250 to 300 meters LOA length overall, with a beam over 50 meters to load bauxite, to load manganese, and to discharge clinker for the cement related companies. We are humbled to have this cargo today. And kudos to GPAT, management, Takwa Port, our director, the DG General, and my humble self, the humble master. I'm humbled to have this vessel with today. And we're going to deliver on our mandate as managers of the Port Authority. Thank you. All right, so those were happenings in the port and shipping industry in the course of the week. And you saw some of the works that uh, are currently ongoing in the port of Takrad and some of the services they render. And uh, Captain Kwesing, we say thank you and kudos to you and your team, uh, Dr. Uh, Kingsley and the rest of the team in the marketing department. You are doing a yeoman's job. We say congratulations to you. And we know that uh, the sky is only the beginning. Well, um, it's now time for us to take our phrase or word of the day. And remember, the phrase or word of the day is brought to you so that we can get you to appreciate uh, the terminologies and jargons we use in the shipping industry. Today's word is decarbonization. 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 Decarbonization is the process of stopping or reducing carbon gases, especially carbon dioxide, being released into the atmosphere. For example, the banning of fossil fuels. In 2018, the International Maritime Organization set a goal to cut the marine shipping industry's greenhouse gas emissions by at least half 
by 2050. Through decarbonization, marine shipping companies are tagged with lowering carbon dioxide emissions as much as possible. All right, so you're welcome back. It's now time for us to zoom into our discussion proper tonight. And uh, if you recall, the Ghana Revenue Authority uh, on October 1, 2022, deployed what we call the Certified Invoicing System, uh, commonly known as EVAT. Now, that's in accordance uh, with the Value Added Tax Act 870-870, uh, as amended. And the EVAT certifies every invoice issued by the taxpayers in real time or near real time for revenue assurance purposes. Now, you would have also heard in the news that some shops, you know, had been closed down, popular amongst them, the China malls and all that. I recall along the line, I was looking for something at the China mall to buy, and then they were all closed. That was within the period. I had to call friends at GRA and say, actually, why, have you opened the shops or not? or not? And, you know, the shops were still closed at the time. And so tonight, we're taking time to take a look at what the EVAT system is and uh, for us to get some explanation from the Ghana Revenue Authority. And so it gives us pleasure this evening to introduce to you Madam Felicia Omotayo uh, Ousu, who is a member of the EVAT uh, technical team at the Ghana Revenue Authority. Also uh, with us in the studios is Mr. Patrick Frimpon Danso, who is also a member of the EVAT technical team, also from the Ghana Revenue Authority. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, and welcome. Thank you. Good yes. Um, I, I, I just said by my narration, I was looking for something to buy at the China Mall, mm -hmm. and that was the time you had uh, locked their shops and all that. Um, tell me, why did you lock the shops? So, okay. Uh, we did that one because of non-compliance. Mm. Uh, we are introducing the EVAT system, as you said. Yes. And this, um, or these shops or these companies were a bit... Your microphone, can you switch it on, please? Yes, okay. great. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So this, these companies were proving a little bit difficult for mm. us. Mm. And under the new act, uh, the amendment act, we have the authority to make sure that if you don't comply, we'll take the action against you. Mm. So if you see them, if you see that we close those shops, it's because they were not complying. Mm. Uh, as we go along, I'll explain what they are supposed to do and what we are also ready for. Mm. Um, it, they are supposed to do integration. Yeah. And the integration, they were dragging their feet. Mm. And therefore, that's why we saw us closing the shop. Mm. But I can tell you that after closing of the shop for about a day or two, they quickly came on board and then almost all their shops are now connected to the EVA sure. system. Okay. Yeah. And so they're open now? Yeah, they're open. You can go. Okay. And you, have, you have their invoices around yeah. yes. that you can verify whether right. it's coming from the Commissioner General's invoices. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, how many shops uh, were closed? Do you have an idea? We closed like seven of them. Seven shops. Mega shops. We, we, we've opened all. All right. So far, we've opened all. Okay. All right. So let me begin with you, uh, okay. Felicia, and find out from you what, what the, this EVAT thing is all about. What is it? It is just an electronic invoicing system for mm. VAT. Mm. Currently, we are using the manual system. Mm. You can see the invoice here. Yes. This is the invoice that when you go to most shops, when you transact a business with them, they are supposed to issue this invoice to you. Mm. But what we are doing is that we are transforming the manual invoicing into an electronic one. Mm. So um, in line with this, the VAT Act has been amended. Mm. So a section of the Act has been amended, Section 41 of um, Act, VAT Act 2013, Act 870, has been amended to cater mm. for the implementation of the EVAT system. Mm. And so it is not a new tax. I want to emphasize on that. Yeah. Ghanians should so that, was going that. To be, that was going to be my next question, whether indeed it was a, a new tax, because oh. that's a suspicion. No, no, no. It, is not, it is not a new tax. The rate of tax is still the same. Mm. We have the standard rates. We have the uh, flat rate scheme. So the standard rates, the, tax, the rate of tax for VAT is 12.5%, mm. which we all know. Mm. And then NHL is 2.5%. Get fund is also 2.5, and mm. COVID-19 levy is 1%. Mm. So that is for the standard rate. Mm. And then for the uh, flat rate scheme, it is 3%, and mm. then COVID-19 levy 1%, make, making it 4%. Right. Nothing has changed. It is just the process of issue, issuing the invoice. Mm. We are using the electronic means to issue the invoice so that we can authenticate mm. and validate the invoices in real time or near real time. Mm. That is all we are doing. Okay. So, um, Patrick, uh, tell me, would you say this was long overdue or is long overdue? Um, because we've worked with the manual system for a very long time now and a lot of people are used to it. 
Uh, I mean, there are those who complied, you know, seriously with it. They, they didn't compromise uh, with the issuance of the VAT invoices and all that. And I understand there was a level of a high level of compliance uh, those days. Um, what necessitated this change to go e? e. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If you look at um, the history behind. Um, uh, in that uh, whatever uh, mm. Yuva system mm. or countries that have implemented this system, Kenya has done it, mm. Tanzania, I think Rwanda has done it quite recently. I think Uganda was also about doing the same thing. Right. These are systems that have proven that it's more efficient for revenue mobilization. Mm. Now, we have a lot of issues with the current system, mm -hmm. both people who have got their own system and those that are issuing manual. Mm. Those that have got their own system, like the big shops that you talk about. Mm. GI Commissioner General has given them authorization to print their own invoices. invoices yeah. So that's why you don't see them writing the manual one. Right. Because you look at the volume of uh, transactions that you go to mm. the malls and then there are a lot of people who can be writing manual. Yeah, because so, I, re I, I know of one company, Graphic Com uh, Communications Group, for instance, um, mm -hmm. we do business with them when we go for publications and yeah. all that to publish, you know, adverts and all that. Then they tell us they have their, they, they, they issue their own you know, invoices. Yes. Because, yes. And, and they show us the letter. Yes. You know, so that due process can be followed. Yes. So, for them yes. so those people have yeah. been given authorization by Commissioner General mm. that they can do this on my behalf. Mm. And the others are those who are writing manual. Right. Now, the challenge we have with these two, let's say those who are printing their own invoice, possibility that they are suppressing sales. Mm. If they make, let's say, 100,000 transactions a month, they can come and tell us that we did only 200. Absolutely. We yeah. have no way to get this thing. Yeah. And there's a software like Zipa that you can use to suppress sales. Right. You get me? Then those who are supposed to use the manual. Sometimes mm. when you go, some of the hotels, do you want VAT invoice or not? Mm. You know, sometimes the charges are inclusive. Right. So it means that government money is going somewhere. Yes. With this system, what it means is that any invoice that comes out of your system, mm. Commission General have seen it. Right. And you are going to account for it. Mm. So there's a new features that you see on this invoice that we are bringing out. Mm. So you can see that this will give us more revenue assurance mm. than what is, uh, what is existing now and then the manual system. Mm. So we think that it will help us for revenue mobilization. And if you look at other countries that have done it, mm. some years back, um, that was 2007, I was in South Africa. Mm. When you buy those things, they have the same system there. And when you are living, they give you your VAT but because you are non-resident. Right. In our law, it's there, but we can't implement it because it's manual. Mm. So when you buy anything and you are leaving the country, when you get to the airport, you show all your receipts. Yeah. Then they will go into the system because it was issued by the Commissioner General of that country. Yeah. And they will, UK, they do the same thing. Mm. Then when they yeah. verify it, then they will give you your v, all the VAT that you, 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 you paid for. Mm. They give their money back to you. Right. You get me? London, the same thing. Mm. Because they have systems. Yeah. Now, in South Africa, when I was living, one of the things I bought, they mm. gave me receipts. Mm. But when I got there, they said this is fake. Okay. So they took that receipt, a copy of it. And that was not, even, that was not even from a duty-free shop? No, from a, from from a mall. Okay. So they took a copy of that in West and said, you are going to do a follow-up. Mm. So this system that we are bringing, Apart from you, if you, you can't dodge, yeah. because if you dodge, you'll be fine out. Okay. If you see that we are issuing invoicing without authorization from Commissioner General, mm. or your invoice is coming out and it's not, it's, not, it's fake, mm. we have a way of checking. Mm. And I'll show you as we go along sure. how we can monitor transactions in real time. Mm. Whatever you happen, right? If you buy something right now from any of the mall, mm. shop right, mail come, I can tell you right now. Mm. But this, we don't have the name on it, but we know that this item has been sold to somebody. Mm. And there's a the tax involved. Right. So all over the world has been proving that that's the best way to go. Mm. And we think we are going to the right, we are on the right path. Right. Um, Felicia, is this uh, e-VAT system across the country or you are piloting or you've just rolled it out fully? Okay, so what we are doing is currently we selected some 50 taxpayers mm. that we started with. Mm. We just want to monitor the system and know that everything is working so well before we can deploy all. Mm. Um, we are looking at by 2024, mm. we should be able to onboard all our registered taxpayers onto mm. the EVA system so that the processes and procedures will be the same mm, in because, the country. Uh, my, interest, my area of interest was how many we have roped in so far yeah. because uh, we're told that in the country we are like 30, 31 million at the moment and just 5 million or a little so, above 5 million are uh, you know, actually complying in so, terms of the payment of taxes. And sure. so I just wanted to find out whether you have some figures to share with us in terms of compliance as, as the EVA takes currently, off. Currently, the uh, people we onboarded, we targeted the uh, complex ones too as well. Mm. So you could see that the Melcom shops, 
all of them are on board. Mm. And they, they have about 74 outlets, outlets across the country. Across the country. Mm. We, we started with Palace Mall yeah. and the rest. So the China these, Mall. Uh, the China Malls. Mm. All of them are going to give us good information. Then we will be able to monitor the system and then know the challenges that might come up for mm. us to address. It. That is why we started with them. So going forward, we are going to start. So the Commissioner General will give us the next batch of people for us to uh, onboard onto the system. Mm. Mm. So how long do you expect to you know run with these 50-something that you mentioned? Uh, currently... We we started in October, first mm. October. Yes. So we we'll monitor them for by the end of the year. If all things go on well, mm. we will we will use the we will um, onboard the next mm. group of people. Mm. So it all depends on how the system fl work, mm. and then the commissioner general giving us the next badge of mm. or the next line of action to take. Mm. Because you know that we have to work yes. with instructions from the Commissioner General. All right. So from your explanation, I also deduce that one of the cardinal reasons for, uh, what do we call it, rolling out the EVAT system is uh, to seal uh, leakages yes. in, in terms of revenue. And to leakage. Opt optimize revenue. Yes. So I just want to find out from you. So within this one month, uh, is the cash flowing in? Sure. Okay. But I cannot give you the figures, the figures. now because... Uh, oh, no, no, not really. But we have to wait for the taxpayers to file their returns to right. us. Okay. The month will be ending, uh, I think, on uh, Monday. Yeah. So when they file their returns, then we'll, we'll get to know. So okay. we, can, we, can, we can share the figures yes, now. Okay. Yes, okay. All right. So, uh, Patrick, I, I know that r running concurrently with the EVAT system is the VAT invigilation. What's the VAT invigilation? Oh, okay. And what's but, the difference okay. between that and the Okay, EVAT? okay. Uh, let, me, let me go back a bit. You asked whether... Uh, in Ghana, it's only about 5 million people who are paying yes. 30 million. Yes. Yeah. When it comes to VAT, mm. everybody pays. Yes. Yes. The VAT is not the, where you, the, thing, the VAT, you are paying the VAT, yes. the not, the, the tax, not the tax, not the shop. Right. You pay it. So if I go to yeah, the consumer, shop, yes, I, the pay, consumer yeah, the pays. I pay it. Yes. So I can say that for the VAT, it affects almost everybody. Everybody. everybody right. Unless you're a kid. Even if you're a kid and they send you to buy something, they will charge you the VAT. Right. So that's why. You are asking for the invigilation and then the... Yes, the, the difference between the yeah, invigilation, you know, invigilation and invigilation has been like a tool that we've been used for some years. Mm. It's something that we use often. Mm. And especially when it gets into the end of the year, mm. we want to find out whether how compliance our taxpayers are. Mm. So what we do is that we send our, our officers there to make sure that every transaction that passes through is checked. Right. But going forward, and as a human being, it's not efficient. Some of the things that we ask ourselves are, what about if I'm checking, I have to get out mm. and mm -hmm. do something and come back? Somebody might walk away, I will not see. Yes. So that is why we are introducing, introducing the, the EVA system. Mm. Okay. That one is not human being, it's system. Mm. System talking to system. Right. But we did that one, or we normally do that one just to find out whether the taxpayers are compliance. Right. And that's what we did. Mm. And okay. you know, it became a lot of issues <laughs> and, and those things. <laughs> And um, okay. a lot of people were talking about this issue. Yeah. But we can assure you that one, one we did, we did about 179. I think one, 179 yeah. shops yeah. or companies were identified yeah. for the invigilation exercise. So okay. as Patrick said, invigilation is part of our compliance tools. Mm. So at times we monitor, we use invigilation to monitor if the taxpayer is suppressing sales. Mm. And we know that if the taxpayer suppresses sales, it means that we wouldn't get the right tax that we are supposed to collect. Mm. At times, to the, uh, the taxpayers, they don't issue the invoices. Yeah. You go to a shop, just as he mentioned earlier on, you go to a restaurant to eat, and then they will look at you if you, if you want a VAT invoice or ask sure. before they will give it to you. These are things that, so invigilation is something that we use, it's a technique that we use to monitor. Mm. So we send our officers there mm. to monitor whatever the taxpayers are doing. Mm. So if you are doing the right thing and officers are there to check mm. or record the sales that uh, you have, you have uh, the, the receipts that you yes. have issued out, mm. I don't think this should be a problem. Mm. So it is, it is part of it. Apart from even invigilation, we have mm. other compliance to, like mystery shopper. Mm. We can just, the Commissioner General can just give out money that you go to this particular shop and then make a purchase. Mm. Just for us to know that this invoice is being issued. That is the mm. only way we can verify. Mm. So just as Patrick said, we are, we are using technology to enhance our business, um, business flow. Mm. So this is going to help us. Mm. So... I think it's, 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 a good, it's, it's something good and it is not new. The, com uh, the companies can attest to, mm. to it that it is something that we have been using 
way back. Mm. I think maybe this year, what Commissioner did was to introduce a lot of uh, t uh, companies. Yeah. Normally we select, mm. but this year possibly we had a lot of uh, companies coming on board. Yeah. So 179. Mm. Normally one company yeah. or maybe two, three. How, how many days do you spend with one company in terms of you know so, undertaking the um, invigilation? Okay, so what we do is we observe directly what they do mm. for a month. Mm. But currently, as we speak, Commissioner General says we should we should extend it. Okay. Depending so on what, depending on what we are seeing. Okay. okay. So it means that the system people are taking adv advantage over the system. Right. So Commissioner says we should extend it. Mm. So that is why. So currently. Our officers are still... They are stationed within, there. Yes. They pitched camp yes. in, the, in the various yes. shops that you have identified. Yes. 179. Yes, and, and they are and doing that. What's the compliance like? Um, do you have to struggle with them for them before they uh, oblige you? What's their demeanor when you go there and tell them we are coming for invigilation? Um, so, are they aggressive? Are they, <laughs> are they kind of like compliant? Okay, so um, we issue out letters mm. before we go out for invigilation. Mm the office manager would issue letters to inform the entity that these officers will be stationed at your premises so that they can observe directly what you do there. So uh, it's, it's, it's not a pleasant thing. Most of, the, uh, most of the companies will not be happy about it because they know that one, they are suppressing sales, to they are not issuing the vast invoices, and it is against the law. It's an infraction. Yeah. So if they know that they are not doing all these things and officers are being sent there, mm. uh, no, nobody will be happy about it. Mm. But that is the position of GRE. So mm. we station officers at the entrance of their shops. We don't, mm. we don't take a big space. Right. Yes. So, so just is, something. <laughs> yes. Grumbling, so, but you're, you're, you're supposed sure. to do so it. So when the, when the customer comes out of the shop, mm. all the officers will do is to just say, kind, uh, they ask in a polite way, mm. please, can I have your receipts? Yeah. So they take the receipts and then they, they would um, record the yeah. sales, mm. the amounts on the receipts, right. and then the receipts number, and mm. then they are good to go. So at the end of the month, they will, at the end of the week, they will tally everything and then compare. Okay. So at the end of the month, we have our records there. We are waiting for the taxpayer to also mm. come and give us uh, his returns. Mm. So when he files his returns to mm. us, mm. then we will compare with the data that we have directly observed. Right. So she mentioned the entities. I just want to find out from you whether uh, GRA has been able to perhaps sensitize or educate these entities uh, so that they can be compliant and they can also help you uh, speak to the consumers or the clients uh, for purposes of roping them in. Yeah. So when you talk about uh, they being compliant, mm. are we talking about the 179 or the those that we are onboarding? Those that you are onboarding yes, and those, those that are currently okay. captured. Yeah. So those yeah. that are onboarding, what we we'll do is that the first thing is that mm. we engage you. What we we'll do, we we'll do for them is that we call them for a breakfast meeting. Right. All the IT guys. Breakfast meeting. Yes, breakfast we, we have yes. to invite me. Yes, we do, we do, do. You, do you drink tea? You know, yes, we and do. And there's yes. biscuits. Yes, we normally do it sometimes at Lisa. There's biscuits. Yeah, everything okay. is there. <laughs> <laughs> so we give them, we, we go through this process like breakfast meeting with the commissioner uh, DTR already there mm. and all the deputy commissioners there. Mm. We introduce the system to them. Right. We tell them what is required from them. Mm. And then we also give, uh, introduce what we call the RM. Relationship managers okay. for each of these companies, so that if you have any difficulty during the onboarding process, this is the person that they can contact okay. and then bring all your issues to them. Right. So that's what we do. Once we do that one, then we start engaging our tech team. Mm. We we'll engage your tech team mm. if it's integration. Mm. Then they will start sharing APIs and other things. I'll show it later yeah. when I get their permission. Right. So we do all the same before we onboard you. Now. When we start engagement, some of them will be a bit difficult. They mm. will normally will come and say that, oh, my developers, those who did the software, yeah. they are not in Ghana. They are in South Africa. They yeah. are in Lebanon. But this system can be done without they coming down mm. because it's, it's done remotely right. without yeah. a person coming down. So we mm. tell them how yeah. it works. Mm. And some of the, some of the, 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 the are vendors, they know they've done it in other countries. Right. So when you mention they are aware mm. and they know how it works. So onboarding process will take time. Yeah. And then we, we, we onboard them. Now, the general public, those that we are not yet onboarding, 
we make sure that we are just giving a general uh, uh, sensitization mm. that soon we are going to start one soon, telling them that this is what we are bringing. Mm. And if you call upon you that we are part of the next group, these are the processes. Right. And this is what is expected from you. Mm. So that's what we do to engage them. Okay. We make sure that we engage them. And I can tell those that were on board from they, those who started going live first October. Mm. We started way back in April. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. gave them way back in April. So you can say we give them a lot of time for them to prepare. Right. And as uh, Felicia said, they were the complex ones. Mm. Yeah. If you look at their, their business model, they are the very complex ones and they have large uh, outlets. Right. So that's why we started with them. We give them ample time. Mm. Once we are done with them, the rest, I don't think they are, they are difficult. With, with, the, with the EVAT system, do you have anything you call, uh, for instance, post-sales audit? Uh, because when it comes to customs and the payment of duties and all that, and the clearance chain in particular, I know we have what we call the post-clearance audit. Uh, which spans up to six years. Uh, even when you have I've been able to claim my uh, products from the, my good from the port yeah. cargo, even in the six in six years, GRA or customs have they have the mandate to be able to come mm. and then check my books and audit them and uh, see whether indeed. I pay the requisite duties to the state and all, and all that. Do you have anything like that? As it, it's the, the same, same thing. Model. It's the same thing. The same government. Yeah. When it comes to audit, we can go to six years, five years mm. and look at your books. Mm. So it's the same thing. Mm. We all have the same law. And I think in Ghana, they give you, we have five years where you have to keep the data. Eh, six years, six you have to keep the data. The data. Right. So it's, it's, it's the same. Absolutely. So we can come back and tell you that, um, give us this data, we want this data. But right now, with the EVA system, mm. we, are already, we know the data, we mm. have it. Mm. We have the data because before the receipt comes out, Commissioner General has got a copy. Right. So we will not come and say we want to do audit, print out. No, we have the data. Mm. We mm. would mm. know and tell you that so far your sales is this. Right. If you want to dispute it because all the data is with us. Right. We give you the authorization to mm. even print the mm. invoice. So we have the data. So this one will make it easier for refunds. Processes, right? Because as it is right now, restaurant processes have to go through manual verification. But with this system, at, at the end of the uh, month, we know the transactions. Absolutely. So we can yeah. tell what is input and output. We can tell straight away. Mm. Mm. Okay. So it's, it makes it easier for us. Okay. With this system, uh, Felicia, let me find out from you. Apart from sealing uh, revenue leakage and all that, mm. what are some of the benefits that stands to accrue to consumers and mm -hmm. the state, the state uh, through GRE? Okay. So. Um, one of the benefits is it will help consumers to keep proper records. Mm. Record keeping is very key and right. very dear to GRE. Mm. And a section of our law even states that Revenue Administration Act Section 27 tells us that everybody has to maintain proper records in the country. If you are transacting mm. business, you are, doing, you are having a taxable activity, mm. you are supposed to keep records. So this system would help the consumers to be able to uh, keep their records so that when it's time for them to file their returns, it's, it will not be cumbersome. Mm. Uh, it will not be so difficult yeah. for them. And again, I can also talk about the compliance level. Mm. It will reduce their compliance cost. Just like Patrick also said, uh, when it comes to refund, sometimes a taxpayer might pay taxes in excess yeah. and then he, will, he would want a refund mm. but because the process is too cumbersome mm. the person might not be able to uh, obtain the refund early yeah. so they end up saying that as for GI, when you pay your taxes they will not give you a refund should there be but the system is going to keep the data very well for us and mm. it's going to help us when it's when when it comes to GRA side we are going to, it's going to help us in terms of audits. Mm. Normally, when we go out for audits, let's take a very big company. When you go for audits, you're supposed to verify all these books. Right. It, it, it's, it's not easy. You cannot make sure that you cross-check everything. Yeah. So we end up doing sampling. Mm. So we'll pick one. Then we, we, we will just... Analyze I mean, it. You, you, and then, you take randomly. You select yes, randomly. Yes, so you we select randomly. randomly. We we'll analyze it, and then we continue with our audit process. Mm. But this is going to help us. Mm. So it's, it's it's a very good thing, and I I want to admonish that we should all uh, rally behind it and let's move our Ghana, our dear mm. Ghana, forward. Okay, I, I don't know whether you'd want to add or you'd want to tell us. Yes, yes, I just want to add one more thing, and as it is right now, sometimes the taxpayers will come and file nil return. Yeah. No, yeah, Neil, 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 yeah, Neil, they haven't sold, sold anything. Yeah. And we have no data to, to either say it's correct or wrong. Mm. 
with this system, you can't. Yeah. Because Commissioner General is seeing the transition. Mm. So you can't come and tell Commissioner General I did a nil return for the yeah. whole month. No, yeah. we know we have the data. Mm. As it is right, if they tell us, unless we go and do audit and we get data from other sources, mm. that means that within that month, this company did some job. Yeah. But he's saying nil. Yeah. That's the only way we can. But with this system, you can't you can't come and file nil. Yeah. Because the evidence is there. The evidence is there. It's, it's clear. Mm. It's, and it's, it's real time mm. or near real. Mm. Now, I understand uh, the EVAT system, uh, the rollout is in phases. So no, I don't need anyone to tell me that this is the first phase, phase one. How many phases do you have in all? And how is it going to uh, you know, uh, be rolled out? Okay, we are looking at about four phases. Mm. So this is a phase one. Phase mm. one, we are using 50 uh, taxpayers. Mm. From our, our work plan, we want to finish this in by the year 2024, end of 2024. We should rule everybody on. Okay. We close have over 30,000 VAT taxpayers, registered mm. taxpayers. Mm. So we have a long way to go. So the, yeah. phase, the first phase, which is the 50, as we said, they are the complex ones. Yeah. And they have more outlets. Once we are done, mm. we will continue. We will go to B2B, B2G, that's business to business. Mm. Then we'll go to B2G, those right. who do business with government. Mm. It yeah. might come out that if you do business with government and you don't have the invoicing system, mm. you when you do any to. business, government will tell you that if you don't have that one, I cannot pay you. Right. So that will force most of these companies to onboard. Mm. Because the onboarding process takes time. Mm. Yeah. So we have about four phases. Four phases. Yeah, four phases. To okay. Go. Right. All right, Felicia, let me, tell you, let me ask you, which businesses are you know, required uh, to issue the uh, EVAT invoices? Oh, okay. So all registered taxpayers, mm. any taxpayer who is um, into a taxable activity, mm. a, taxable, a taxable supply is required. So mm. if you are registered uh, and you are given the mandate to collect VAT on mm. our behalf, then you are supposed to um, onboard mm. onto the EVA system. But as, as we, we are sitting here currently, mm. uh, we've started with 50 taxpayers. Yeah. So it means that we have others still issuing the manual invoicing mm. yes so we are in transition mm. so they will still continue to use the manual invoice and uh, until we onboard everybody okay. onto the system we'll come back but i know you have a presentation uh, you'd want to show us uh, walk us through some of the processes yes. okay. yeah. and so if we can uh, go to the screen okay. and then uh, go and do some some oh, touch screen yes. touch screen <laughs> mathematics <laughs> 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 and see how it pans out yes yeah. yeah, so yes mm. Let's let's see how it goes. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh where are the technicians? Oh, uh, okay, this they can yeah. Okay. okay. Great. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This, this so that's it, yeah. yeah. So so walk us through. Oh, okay, mm. can you can you project it into the mode? Uh -huh. yeah. Into presentation mode. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, fine. sure. Okay, thank you. Do, uh, uh, Felicia, I want us to look at Let's look at the amended act, okay. 41, uh, 2, A and B, and then I'll use that one to explain this. Okay. Because it's a, it, the, the law, the new amendment says something, and then I want to use this one to All explain right. it. Okay. And if, for, if you are watching us, this one is what we call the certified invoices of the Commissioner General. Okay. So you can see that this is for Commissioner General. Yes. And you can see somebody, general person, monitoring mm. all transactions in real time or yes. near real, yes. as we said. Yeah. So if you look at this, this is what the commissioner general so invoice system VAT mm -hmm. and that the VAT and VAT withholding tax. Yeah, we are going to ask we go and withholding tax. We have VAT okay. withholding, mm. which we are going to incorporate them into the system okay. as we go along. Okay. 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 So, uh, finish uh, okay. 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 So, um, the amended act mm -hmm. is Act 1082. Mm -hmm. So, Section 41 mm -hmm. of Act 870 as amended. Yeah. So. Two, mm -hmm. a taxable person mm -hmm. shall a issue a tax invoice through a certified invoicing system. Okay, I want you to pause there. The law is saying that mm. if you are a VAT tax person, you're mm. supposed to issue invoice through a system, okay. meaning that you have to have your own system yeah. that you are using. Mm. Okay, mm. so if you look at some of the companies, the big shops, yes. they have their own point of sale system. Right. So the law is saying that they will continue using this one. Okay. Like they are going to continue to use their system. Yes. That's what the first A said. Yes. Now, meaning that if you are using manual, you are not part. So in manual, I will talk about manual, GR is going to give you free invoice okay. system for you to use. Yeah. You no more manual. Okay. So the law now is saying that before you issue invoice, it must be through a system, which is called certified invoicing system. Yeah. Let's look at a, a B. Okay, so the B says, 
ensure that the certified invoicing system of the taxable person mm -hmm. is integrated into the invoicing system of the Commissioner General. Thank you. So you can see that it's, it doesn't end there. Mm. You see, once you have your system, yeah. ensure that it's connected to Commissioner General invoicing system. Okay. Okay. So those who are having their own system, mm. They are they have their point of so they uh, are systems integration. Yes, okay. they do okay. systems integration. Okay. Those who are writing manual, we are going to give them system. All right. We have mobile version. I have it on my phone. Mm. We have an online one, and then we have a desktop. Right. Which is already connected to Commissioner General. Okay. So you'll be issuing the invoice, and then be coming straight to Commissioner General. General. Okay. So this one, so we are doing integration for those who have their own system, mm. and mm. those who don't have system, they are writing manual. We are going to give them free mm. software. Okay. That so is connected. Those, those who have their own systems are those that we mentioned, like the graphic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. They okay. like to go to the Mercom, right. the shop, sure. right? They have okay. their own system. Okay. They call ERP or point of sale. Okay. They we are doing. Uh, integration okay. and those who don't have anything that are writing manual, yeah. they have to use desktop now. Right. Meaning that there are certain things that we require from them. Right. They need a laptop like mine, mm. or they need a smartphone, yes. or they need a desktop. Then they can connect it to that one. Right. Now going forward, what we are doing is that because people, software developers, are still selling point of sale system, which is issue invoicing. Mm. Junior is going to certify these guys mm. so that if I'm a software developer and I develop apps for, let's say, point of sales software. Right. GRN satisfy me, I'm connected already. So when I come to sell to you, you are not going to take it and later, I will come back and do integration. It's already mm. connected mm. to GRN. Mm. And we will know that most of the software companies are start talking to us that, please come and satisfy our system for us so that right. it makes it easier for us Absolutely. so that we can sell. Yeah. So basically, this one. and at the end of the month, once all data is coming to Commission General, and yes. this one is real time on year real. Right. Commission General is stamping it. At the end of the month, mm. when you're going to file your return, when you go to our taxpayer portal, your data will be there. Everything is captured, yeah. Mm. You just look at it and confirm. Mm. Just as we said, you cannot come and suppress still. Yes. Because we have the data. And yes. we are pushing the data to your filing mm. uh, portal for you. Mm. So you can look at it and then either confirm mm. it. If you disagree, we have the data. Patrick, before I continue, let me find out from you. Okay, let's <laughs> say I, I operate one of these things. I issue my own invoices, my yeah. and I do it and it comes here. And perhaps whilst entering it, I made a mistake. Instead of uh, perhaps entering five, mm -hmm. I entered eight. Mm -hmm. um, if I explain to you, mm -hmm. are you going to listen to me or you think that perhaps I, once I've entered eight, you are taking it as no, eight? No, the, the system doesn't change what you do now. Mm. So, for example, if you have your own system, you are using manual, mm. and you write the manual book. Mm. If you make it, you cancel it. Right. Mm. The system allows that. Okay. So you can make a mistake and then alter the mm. Listen, mm. Uh, alter the transaction. I make a mistake and I send it. It's, it's captured in the Commissioner General yeah, yeah, yeah. system. Yes. Can I go yes, back and can, then? Yes. If, if you look at the, those who have their own system, mm. you know, when you buy things from one of the big shops, you can go and say return goods. Right. Yeah. There's a process. Okay. And that one too, the Commissioner General will see it. Once it's everything, if I bought, let's say, I bought something hundred Ghana from mm. you, and then I return it. Yeah. And I say, well, I want to take another 10. Mm -hmm. And it's like going to be 80 Ghana cities. Yeah. They ask me that I make sure that I consume all the money. Yeah. But they don't give money back. Sure. So I take another 10. But I still also come back to Commissioner General right. for stamping. Okay. Those, if you make a mistake mm. on the system, you can correct it. Okay. You can. And if those people, if you go and buy something from somebody and I'm using the free invoice, mm. I say I want to buy five. Then you made a mistake and did a six. Mm. As soon as you print the invoice for me, I also am buying five instead of six. Right. Then, then they can call the invoice, mm. cancel it, and then issue a new one. So okay. it can yeah. be done. Oh, I see. Right. All right. Okay. So that thing changes. All what is happening right now is that mm. Commissioner General has got visibility in all issuance of VAT. Right. Okay. So yes. real time monitoring and so yes. com, uh, let's assume this Commissioner General sitting in his office and yeah, that, that's <laughs> a, So let me let me see if I can. Yes. This is what we call the heartbeat. Mm -hmm. This heartbeat tells us yeah. at the head office or wherever mm -hmm. tell who is on and who is not on. Okay. And you can see that with this slide, you can see that about 26 is on green. Green means that they are active and issuing invoice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So example, let's say we see companies that we uh, shop that we know that they are weekend is busy. Yes. Then they are red or they are they are let's say gold. It means it's gold means that for the last two hours they've not sold anything. Yeah, which sure. is, is which is wrong, yeah sure. So here when we sit down at our offices, we can go and do a soup. Mm. I check. Mm. We can ask people to go go to this shop. They are this thing is off. Yes. Why? Let's go and find out. Yeah. So we have this monitoring tools that we use. The other one is the one we call the revenue monitoring. Mm. That one I can show you real time data that is mm. coming from the shops. Yes. As it is right now. Okay. So this is what they call the hard data. So when, when it is green, it means very active. They, 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 you can see that they are yeah. working. When it is yellow, uh, this one then means that it means that the last time they came on was. Two hours, two hours ago was the last time they issued invoice. So when we see big shops like and that. And proper yellow power yes. is like four hours. Four hours. Four hours. Okay. So <laughs> as you see the red, it's 12 hours ago, yeah. these people have done work. It means yes. that 
they might be a company that don't work on weekends. Absolutely. Okay. So yeah. we have this monitoring tool that give us visibility in whatever the taxpayer mm, is doing, mm, mm, wherever they may be. Mm, mm. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I Thank think uh, that was uh, quite uh, mm. practical. Mm. Sure. And uh, you, Felicia, you have uh, something uh, that we can use, uh, perhaps can, and be able to check the validity yeah. or genuineness of a receipt or invoice sure. that has been issued to you. Can you uh, demonstrate, demonstrate that? Okay, Once so, you see there, yeah, sure. So, okay. We have the QR code. So I have on my screen, there's nothing on my screen now. Mm. So I have invoices here. So yeah. we'll scan one and then we'll see the genuinity of it. Okay. All right. So I think it comes across as the, the what the insurance people do. The police do mm -hmm. when they are checking your insurance. Sure. Uh, they're able to check it on their phone. You sure. whilst they stop you. Yes. When they stop you, yes. uh, they take your chassis number, enter it, and then find and then out whether yeah. Good. Your, yeah uh, absolutely. And what, one of the strategies that you know you might have about a shop have got maybe about five point of, uh, sales, mm. Mm. different five cashiers. Yes. And that shop can decide that. They will use five to go through the GRI system, and mm. two will not pass through the GRI system. Right. It's possible. Yeah. Yes. So for our verification team, will always be on the on the on, on, on the field. Right. We come unannounced. We come. We make sure that five guys, five staff occupy all the uh, till. Yes. And make sure anybody who comes out, we verify. Yeah. So we don't tell them we are coming. So if you are doing that, okay, you'll be very careful. So the suspicion them. is that some they mix up both the genuine and. Fake invoice, yeah, there's, a uh, uh, there's a possibility that okay. if I have about, let's say, five uh, uh, point, uh, 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 channels yes. where people will come in and uh, they pay, yeah. I can decide that, okay, with these three machines, it should go through the GIS system. Yeah. But with these two, two, it shouldn't go. Right. So it means that people who are paying through that one, yeah. they have been charged VAT all yeah. right, yeah. but the VAT doesn't come, come to, to government. Yeah. government. Mm. So when we come, we just block it and then make sure that we check each till right. and see what is coming from each other. Right. And we find out that you, you pay an announced visit. No, you're on announced yeah, visit. So there's no way you can say, oh, yeah, and yeah, then so you're moving on. Yes. Yes. Okay. Are you making any progress, Felicia? Yes. Um, I have scanned my. Okay. Yeah, I have scanned my. Which, but which you invoice? Can, you can also, you can also which check on your. Which invoice is that? Yes. yes. I have, have given you one invoice. Yes. I have a, this one. I have it. So it verifies. Yes. Okay. And once it verifies, it tells you that it's verified. Okay. If it doesn't. A, a small form will pop up okay. for you to enter the shop and the amount. Okay. You know it's like you are reporting mm, mm. that shop to us that they are issuing fake invoice. Invoice. Okay. Wow. And wow. two, the other thing we are doing is that we want to change behavior when mm. it comes to invoice. Mm. So Commission General is coming to, uh, we are going to come out with a, what we call the reward system, mm. a raffle. Yes. So when you buy anything, and they give you invoice. Yes. Verify it. Yes. If you verify, we enter into a draw. Okay. Then okay. at the end of the month, the draw will be called. People will be winning mobile phones, laptops. That's to cars. motivate and yeah, encourage, to, yes, and encourage to people change to behavior. Because yeah, sure. yeah. most of times, when we go somewhere and then they yeah. give you the VAT, sometimes yeah. we don't even ask for it. Yeah. Now, because there's something, we want to change the behavior mm. of this thing. Mm. Give me my VAT, but let me scan and yeah. I can win something. Right. So that's right. what we are trying yeah, to do. So people will be forced okay, to I? compel the yes. people selling to issue, issue the invoice. Absolutely. And once they know that the general public is verifying, mm. you will not issue fake. fake because when absolutely. you issue fake, under the law, it's there. You'll be caught. You, you can go for jail for about, I mm. think, six months and mm. then plus penalty, mm. you pay some money. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. The, the offense. Yes. yes. Okay, so whilst you are at it, uh, walk us through the process of, you know, uh, scanning your receipt okay. and to ensure that it's right or not so that people who are watching, uh, viewers can, 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 you know, follow the steps. I'm okay. So, so first, let me first, um, uh, let's identify the new features on the receipt. On the receipt. Mm. First. You know, before... Evat, mm. this invoice will come without this portion. Okay. This portion is called the SDC information. It will come without the, the key, where the code, uh, the, 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 where yes, you yes, have to yes, scan the code. Yes, is, yeah, sure. yes. Okay. it okay. depends. Mm. Some uh, some companies or some transfers are, are, are printing barcode. Yes. Because we don't want them to change anything. Right. So we make provision for barcode and then QR code. Yeah. So if you have them, you can see that under uh, the sales data controller information, we have what we call uh, signature, receipt signature. If, if, you can ra if you can raise it for the cameras, okay. they, they want to capture it in so, the camera. Just okay. raise it, yeah, okay. sure. Raise it like that. Yeah. Okay. So here, mm. there are some information here. These are encrypted data. Mm. For each receipt, it's unique. Right. Commissioner General, we call something signature. Right. That signature tells us where you bought it from mm. and the item that is on this receipt. Mm. And once we scan this one, yeah. we can know whether it's genuine or not, not. genuine. 
Yeah. So these are the new features on the on the receipt. You see either QR code or barcode. Right. And you see this SDC information that's called sales data uh, controller information. Mm, mm, and that mm. one tells everything about the receipt. You cannot duplicate this. Right. Because even if you duplicate this thing, the true picture or the true items will be yes. shown. Yes. Because when I scan and you give me an invoice mm. and let's say you say water. Yes. Meanwhile, the original was, let's say, rice. Right. When I scan, the original doesn't come to you. It comes mm. to GRA to verify, okay. which we have it. Yeah. We generate this code. Mm. So right now, the difference is that when you issue a receipt, before the receipt comes out for you to print, it goes to Commission Journal for this information yeah. before it comes out from the printer. Right. And we have embedded that system in your sales data controller. Mm. So mm. we have mm. access to everything that you do. And you can't delete this data. Mm. This data, you can't delete it. Yeah. So this is how we do the verification. All right. Okay. So this is Ion Port here on Metropolitan Television. And uh, tonight we are discussing the certified invoicing system. That's a certified invoicing. That's the EVAT. Uh, that the uh, uh, GRA has rolled out, and with me in the studios doing the discussion tonight, uh, uh, Madam Felicia uh, Omotoy, Omotayo. 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 South Nigerian. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> Omotayo uh, Owusu. Uh, also in the studios, Patrick Frimpondang. So they are from the uh, EVAT technical team at uh, the Ghana Revenue Authority. They are working us through the processes on what the EVAT actually is and how you have to pursue it and follow it and be compliant if you are, uh, you know, uh, somebody that operates a shop, if you are somebody that's a consumer, uh, you'd also have a responsibility to be able to demand from them to, uh, you know, to issue you that VAT invoice. And he says, I mean, uh, you can win some prices uh, once forward. you are compliant. Yes, and so that's what we're discussing tonight. We're going for a very quick break. When we come back, we'll continue with the discussion. Please do stay with us. Every now and again, Goil makes good things happen. This time, Goil has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Goil Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Goal Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Goal Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Goal Super XP Run 95. Now, there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goyle has that sorted. Goyle, good energy. Electricity, electricity, our taxes. Our taxes, our future. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell that my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is. You still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water. Or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policies that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the flood have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Currently, my goods are on the high seas, covered with their marine cargo insurance policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima, tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my contractors all risk insurance for the project and then workers compensation for all the workers on site with serene insurance they will make sure they'll cover your unknown tomorrow today serene insurance a new face of insurance call us now
MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating greater opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading bloc globally. MPS, we connect. You thrive. That's the EVA that has been ruled out by the Commissioner General of the Ghana Regional Authority. Indeed, it's called the Certified Invoicing System. Certified Invoicing System. And that's the EVA, uh, to be precise. And so we're going back to uh, Patrick, who's back uh, to the touch screen. Uh, he's taking us to the dashboard so that we can see in real time. Uh, the revenues that come in when uh, the transactions uh, go through. Please uh, take it over. Thank you. So you can see uh, this the but, but before you continue, uh, Patrick, let me announce that the phone lines have been activated, and so uh, callers would have to call in, viewers would have to call in and contribute to the discussion. The number is the usual number you dial, 20 553 You can call in and contribute to the discussion. Please, shoot. Thank Patrick, you. yeah. So this is the dashboard. So as of today, we can see right now, these mm. are the figures that are coming in. Mm. The total transaction for those who are connected, yeah. those who are connected are about 1.7 million. And the VAT portion is about 192,000. Right. These are people who are connected and they are issuing invoice. So if you want to look at the invoice, in real time, we can tell the invoice. Mm. We can pick any of them. You can see... Uh, this company, ShopRite Achimota, yes. somebody have bought something 33 cities, uh, 96 um, pesos. And these are the, get the details. These are the items. So this, we see everything that happens at your shop. In real time. In real time. It happens and then the date and time is there. So this gives us the so information. This is, this is 30th. Mm -hmm. This is 30th, mm -hmm. uh, October 2022. Mm -hmm. And the time is 633. Mm -hmm. 333. Wow. And that is 635, so just about two, three minutes ago. ago. Yeah. So we, it tells us everything that has happened once we are connected. Mm. 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 So this is the, so Commissioner General can sit down and know so far, okay, the revenue that is coming, yeah. it's possible that I'm going to hit my target or not. Yeah. And this comes is real time. Right, right. Yes. right. So we want them to know that whatever is happening, Commissioner General has got visibility in yes. there. Yes, yes. And can go into the invoice and look at the invoice, uh, the items on it. Mm. But this one without your name is not there because yes. it's just a customer. Yes. So basically, this is what I wanted to show to uh, viewers. Yes. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Take your seat. Uh -huh. well, let me come to you, Felicia, and then find out. Oh, you've okay. been able to do your scanning now. Yes. Uh -huh. let, me, yes. let me scan. Let mm. me scan it. Mm. So, viewers, my screen is is blank. So yes. I'll just go to um, camera yeah. and then I'll scan the QR code. Mm. All right, so this is what I have. Okay. So the seller detail, the buyer detail, the things that the person bought, yes. and then the check mark is there, verified. Okay. Wow. wow. All right. Let's go into the phone lines and welcome uh, Jonathan. I understand he's calling us all the way from Cape Coast. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Please shoot. So this is what I have. Yes, I have seen all the applications on the market, how to check the uh, value added tax. But when you go to some... Hello. Good evening. Yes, but when you go to some uh, supermarket, they use calculator to calculate. It. Can you lower the volume on your TV set and and continue, please? I think we're having some feedback here. Hello, Jonathan. Well, I think uh, his his line is is not helping us. So, uh, Felicia, please go. Yeah. You, 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 he wanted manual. he wanted to find out that others are using the manual system or yeah. whatever yes, it yeah, is. Yes. Uh, so currently, uh, as we said, we started with fifty taxpayers. Mm. So he might get he, when he goes to Melcom at Cape Coast or Takradi or wherever. I think that he will get the Evert invoice. But yes. currently, because we have not we have not onboarded all the taxpayers. These are some of the things that you see. So 
he would have to request for a manual invoice yes. or the electron, those who have their systems already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That Commissioner General has given them yeah. that authority. We mm -hmm. call it special dispensation or the retail scheme. Mm -hmm. If they have been given that dispensation, yeah. then they can issue it. So currently we are running the two. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're running the two? Yeah. Sure. Oh, that's because what I wanted to ask. Whether yes. GRE will continue to issue the VAT booklet? Yes, because that's nothing. Okay. We, have, we have a lot of taxpayers, mm. and we have started with only 50 of them. Yes. So, so you, yes. you still and be so heavily we, dependent on sure. the And manual. so we onboard all our taxpayers. Okay. And the yes. time we have Francis uh, online, let's welcome him. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Thank you very much. Yeah. I think this is long overdue. Mm. I've been waiting for a day to see this happen in Ghana. Because sometimes you go to buy something and you are wondering whether the VAT is actually paid to the government. So I think it is a very good thing. Mm. But my plea is that please, let us use the money wisely. Mm. Somebody somewhere should not chop the money so that Ghana will go forward. Mm. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Thank you, too. Thank you very much for your call, Francis. We're grateful. <laughs> uh, let me come okay. to you, um, uh, Patrick, and find out whether... Uh, this whole arrangement is quite secure because we have issues with hackers and all that who can hack into the system. They can hack in, into it and manipulate figures and throw everything into the Zari. Um, how secure is, is the system? Yeah, for a government to put up a system like that, we have to make sure that we come up with a system that is very robust. Mm that people cannot penetrate into the sex systems. Right. And as I said, this is not rocket science. That's been mm. done elsewhere. Mm. So we have all the knowledge in how to protect this data. Mm. And I can assure uh, our viewers that this system is secured. Mm. And also, there's a failover. Mm. We have made provision for redundancy, mm. meaning that the system, hardly for the system to go off. Yes. When one fails, one will another one will take over. Mm. So we have a lot of, we are building a lot of mechanism mm. to make sure that this system doesn't go off and people don't have access to this data, right. like hackers cannot. cannot. Okay. okay, that's the assurance we have from yeah. you. Yeah. Um, let me, let's go on to the phone lines. I understand Jonathan is back on the line again. Good evening. Good evening. Are you the same Jonathan that called earlier from Cape Coast? No, no, please. You are I'm calling, calling from? Takradi. Takradi, okay. Please shoot. Yeah, so I wanted to ask the GRE man, uh, is this system going to use the? Uh, uh, is it going to use internet? And if yes, uh, is government not uh, adding on more expenses to this already suffering uh, business people in Ghana? Mm. Okay. All right. Thank you very much indeed. His, his problem is that you'll be forced now to use internet uh, if you're using your phone, if you're using a laptop, or even a desktop. Uh, to to you know run this this whole thing of yeah. e-invoicing and it means that you are going to be needing internet and that's what yes. he's asking whether yeah. it's not adding up already to the cost of doing business okay. you know a lot of people complain about cost of doing business <laughs> now yes, um, yes this yes. system can work on and offline mm. yeah. you need internet connectivity to get what we call the this key from Commissioner General to do print your invoice mm. just less than one minute mm. sometimes we watch videos from our WhatsApp. Mm. which takes more data than so what you require. Yeah, yeah. And you can work offline. Yeah. So you don't need to be on internet throughout. Mm. If you look at the big shops that we connected them, mm. they work offline. Mm. So as, as and when they get uh, internet, the data is pushed to GRE. Right. The system is such a way that you can work on and offline. Yeah. You don't need to be on internet constantly unless yeah. you decide that you want to go for the one that you'll be on internet throughout. We have the online version. Mm. If you go for... The, uh, the off and online, yeah. that way you can be online just for a few minutes, acquire a signature, right. and then you are good to go for 24 hours. Okay. Nice one. Yeah. All right. I understand we have Obed from Ashaiman. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening, sir. Yes, please shoot. Yes. Um, I like the initiative, and um, like one of your colleagues said, it's long overdue. Mm. Um, but I feel, I wanted to ask this question. If... Um, if um, someone should pay, okay, if someone should pay yeah. or does not pay, is there a way, like a company doesn't pay government staff, or is there some kind of manipulation that can happen at DRA end mm. where still people, we are in Ghana, where people can still um, so that's pay them. Okay. Otherwise, the initiative, as brilliant as it is, would not see the light of day. 
Okay. So I just wanted to know if there is some kind of manipulation at that end where individuals could also enter right. and change things from oh. their perspective All to right. also see some companies. Point yeah. well made. Point well yeah. made. Obe, thank you very much. So, Felicia, I want you to take that. Whether there is any any way, any officer or official from GRE can manipulate the system no. and perhaps, uh, you know, st I mean, for no. obvious reasons. So, Riley, as we said, um, we are monitoring the system mm. in, real, in real time. Mm. So, there is no way an official will be able to manipulate the system. Whatever right. transaction that the person does, a taxpayer does, mm. quickly we see it. Right. So you cannot go into the system to do anything. Even those on the technical team, we can't do anything about it. Okay. There is nothing. Mm. Now, tell us, are there any sanctions that applies to intransigent, uh, you know, people, people, those that are supposed to issue these, you know, invoices, if they fail to do that? What are, what are some of the sanctions that you meet out of them? Okay. So, there are sanctions, and I believe that we all know that we work with the laws. Mm. And so, the laws gives us the mandate that if, if somebody doesn't comply with the tax laws, mm. we have to sanction the person. Right. But I want to emphasize that sanctions is not... Is not um, our priority, no. We want taxpayers to voluntarily comply. We want taxpayers to voluntarily comply right. with the tax laws. Mm. But should you push us, then the sanctions will apply. apply. Yes, so we look at our Revenue Administration Act, Section mm. 78 is there. Right. We look at Section 82 too, we can um, apply the sanctions. Mm. You can go for a jail term. So we are saying that this is the main reason why we want taxpayers mm. to understand the system right. and then comply. Okay. If you comply, we don't have any business coming to close your shops. Mm. Just as we started, those, that's, those, those um, companies we started with mm. and that they were not complying, yeah. we had to use the laws and go and lock up their the shops, shops yeah. and stuff, which is not, it's not friendly. Not, and not we, yeah. GRA, that is not our interest not that, because yeah, we so. need you to work so that we can also Get collect money. the money for right. rev okay. uh, government. All right, let's, let's, let's go back to Cape Coast and welcome Jonathan. Hello, Jonathan. Yes, sir. Good evening, once again. Good evening. Were you the one that called? You were the one that called earlier. Yes, the please. First caller. Okay, sure. Okay. Yes, I was asking with those uh, supermarkets using calculators. How do they pay uh, their tax? With those who what? Who are using calculators to Cal calculate for the items bought? Calculators. Right. Yes. How do they pay tax? So far as they are not using valued uh, other tax, uh, whatever invoice. Are they VAT registered? The first question one should ask yes. is, are they VAT registered? Because okay. we use threshold. Mm. So there are shops that if you, if you don't qualify yeah. to be registered, we have not registered you. you. Okay. And so I want to find out from him, if Jonathan is still listening to us. I think we, he, uh, to Jonathan, are yes. you there? We should know because when he doing. says that they are using calculators, calculators yeah. I don't, I don't everybody, really understand the question. Everybody uses a everybody calculator, will use a calculator to yes. 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 yes, yes. So I don't really get his yeah. question. Mm. So if he can so, yes. um, come, come again, come so clear, that we sure. can get the yeah, clarity sure. of the question. Absolutely, absolutely, I get you. All right. So um, okay, you've walked us through the process mm -hmm. uh, of, of identifying what a genuine uh, invoice should mm -hmm. be and, and all that. I just want to find out from you. Um, what a customer should do, you said there's a draw. Uh, the customer should very once they follow uh, checks and something pops up, it means that invoice is fake and it's registered automatically in the, in the Commissioner General System. Mm -hmm. And so the fellow will be, you know, uh, reporting. reporting. So what, what, what that means is that mm. it could be that it's not fake. Right. As I said, it's real time or near real. Right. So by the time maybe you do the, you did a scan, mm. the data is not with Commissioner General. That's, That's what you're doing the verification. But it's genuine. Right. Yeah. So it might take a time. So mm. the system will tell you that it's pending mm. for verification. So mm. when it pop up, it doesn't mean that it's, it's fake. fake. Okay. It means that that data is not yet at the Commissioner General's end. Okay. So because the data takes time. If they are working offline, it means that all the data is being recorded at their local system. Right. But that local system that is recording that transaction, we can tell. Mm. We can know that they have done 100 transactions. Mm. Let's say 180 has been pushed with all the details. That's the one I show. You can see the details of the invoice. Absolutely. Then 20 is yet to be pushed, but we know that you have done 100. Right. So when you verify and we pop up a message that asks you for the name and the amount, mm. it doesn't mean that it's fake. It's okay. You are telling us that I bought this thing from here. I've yeah. not got a verification okay. done yet. Okay. So that it's pending. All right. If we check, 
and it doesn't verify, meaning that they are issuing a fake one. Okay. Then we will take action. Right. Okay. I understand we have a call on the line. Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. Yes. Please, flow. Yeah, please. I want to find out uh, how uh, how many companies have you ruled on this program? And okay. have, have, you, have you trained the government agency, internal auditors, on this aspect? Okay. All right, yes. How many you have enrolled, you have roped in, and whether you have trained them? Like, oh, yes, like, as, as, I, as, as, as we said, we are, we are mm. doing 50, Felicia yeah. mentioned it. Mm. But, you know, nothing changes. So, this system is not changing their business model. If you go to these shops to buy anything, mm. nothing changes. Yeah. Right. All what we have done is behind the scene, mm. and we are plugging. We have, we have plugged so, in. they don't need training. Right. Yeah. They've been trained on how to use their point of sale system mm. already. Yeah. Those we are going to train are those who are using the manual system. Then we are going to give them a system, mm. which is very simple. I have one on my mobile phone. I can right. use my mobile phone to sell. Mm. We have one of the companies that yeah. is going around. They use their mobile version. Yeah. Yeah. And they are, you can see some of them, some of the invoices that come to Tichima, and you can see the invoice coming in. Right. So this one, the training is for those who are using the manual right. that we are going to train. We engage you, we train you well before mm -hmm. you start using it. Mm. We even those demonstrate the, it. Uh, the, the, the point of sale. We don't need to train them because the system they use it already mm -hmm. and nothing changes. Mm -hmm. What we have done is to plug behind their system and they monitor all the transactions. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Let's do some messages now. This one says, Hi, Ken. Nice program. I'm watching now. Uh, keep up the good work from, Nico from Nicolas Cabori. Well, uh, Nicolas, thank you very much. My very good friend. It's been ages. Uh, thank you very much for choosing uh, Iron Port uh, this night. Uh, this one says, Good evening. I think the mystery shopping is the best way to go because there are a lot of PIs. Uh, what, what's PI? Do you understand what's uh, yeah, Artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Artificial intelligence. Okay. I think that's yeah, what mm -hmm. so is it a, 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 No, is it The fellow said PI. 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 Mm. All mm -hmm. right. Let, 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 let mm -hmm. me, I understand we have a caller. Let's go for the caller and then come back to the messages and then we wrap up. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening, sir. I'm interested in your program. Thank you, sir. You, you know, normally you take but we hold it. Yes. 7%. Mm. I'm an accountant and I'm worried. I know that all the but is for Ghana government. Mm. But why should you take a letter, 7%? Mm. I mean, you can take 50, 60, or even all the mm. amount. The one paying is to who hold all the amount and pay to Ghana revenue. Mm. But you end up taking part and paying part to we, the, the customers. Mm. I don't know. So all if right. you can correct the situation, I think it would generate revenue to Ghana government. All right. Thank you very much, Sammy. Uh, do you want to give a response or is it straightforward? It's, it's, it's straightforward. Okay. So that's All right. Fine. John says, good evening. I think the military shopping is the best way to go because there are a lot of PIs in the system. The GRA must make good use of them. Putting out the personnel I from the GRA endangers their lives. And so I will advise that the GRA should rely on the mystery shopping. Uh, this one is from Stan Park. Okay. I think the PI is a private investigator. Yeah. Private yeah. investigator. Yeah. 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 That's okay. right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. I understand we have a last caller. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Yeah, hello, good evening. Yes, please. Yes, um, my name is um, James. I wanted to, to contribute to your program. All right, if you can lower the volume on your uh, TV set a bit and then shoot, that would be great. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to find out what happens with um, this online um, sale. Let's say sales on Instagram, sales on Facebook, Facebook you know, where things. we pay on um, Momo. Yeah. I am at the comfort of my home. They tell me the price. I do yeah. the payment. How does the system track Capture those? Them, yeah, sure. yeah. Great. Thank you very much indeed. That's a very good one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and we have looked at those things mm. and it's difficult. Um, yeah. We all have WhatsApp groups mm. where somebody will put some items there, yeah, sure. and then yeah. if I want to buy, yeah. then I'll pay it. by Momo. But yeah, this person you, yeah, that sure. is selling is mm. not a VAT registered. It could okay. be. Okay. So yeah. he doesn't qualify under this one. Mm. Mm. Now, when it comes to the e-commerce, mm. we have a solution. As we go along, we are going to deploy that one yeah. too. Right. Whereas people buy things from Alibaba and all those things, mm. they are all VAT. Yeah. Now, we are going to use the Fintech. Mm. Because telling Alibaba or let's say uh, what, these big shops yes. that come and pay, collect VAT there, and come and pay to Ghana. It's a bit difficult. Mm. Now we have Alibaba.com in Ghana. 
They launch so, it. Yeah, they uh, launch it. So, so, yeah. so they means mm. that they have a rep locally. Yes. Now those payments, when those things, when you buy them, mm. you do the payment on a platform, mm. and they use their fintechs. Mm. You can use um, uh, Z paid, PayPal. PayPal. These are people who are locally here. Right. So most of the e-commerce businesses, we are going to tackle the VAT from the point of where you are making the payment. Mm. So when you check out, and you go into the payment platform. Then we compute the tax, right? And it asks you to pay. Then you pay to the fintechs. Mm. So the fintech becomes a withholding a VAT withholding agent for right. January, okay. and then they will come and account to us mm. because getting some of these big big companies to come and account for us is difficult. Yeah. So the fintechs are local companies. That's mm. why we are going to tackle the the e-commerce, okay. especially. The but those ones when people put things on their their WhatsApp um, status that we buy, yeah. they might not qualify to be VAT tax. Okay. Person. Okay. So that's why we can. Maybe going that. forward in future, we'll try to locate some of these ones and then that's what the rope them that's in. That's what the okay. We can make more questions. That's why we brought the e levy. The e levy to make sure that yes. if you are making payment to a person, Great. then you make charge the Yeah, sure. Yes. Yes. Hi, good evening. I have mm -hmm. I've noticed that in some shops, uh, when you ask for VAT receipt, they will tell you that if they have to give you one, uh, then you will have to pay for the VAT. Uh, before they give it to you. <laughs> uh, how will I be able to check whether the VAT I pay has, has been paid to the GRE or whether uh, the, the withholding tax has also been paid to GRE? Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. okay, so we have um, for every registered VAT person, you are supposed mm -hmm. to charge and collect the VAT. Mm -hmm. So you can include it in your um amounts yeah so we have the inclusive figure and then the exclusive ones mm. so it is embedded in it so they shouldn't tell you that if you want a vat invoice mm. you have to but bear mm. in mind that the vat it is a customer that pays the vat yes and so you should be able to pay if you want us to develop our nation yeah. very well you should mm. be able to pay and then collect your so collect and then, and then insist on your Receipts. Okay. If you if you transact any business, mm. make sure that you insist on your receipts. All right. Uh, are there any numbers you would want to put out so that people who okay. would uh, okay, want okay. to get in contact with you would do just in thirty seconds and then we wrap up. We are All right. So already, uh, you know. So we have out, our right? toll free numbers. Mm. So we have zero eight hundred nine hundred. One one zero. Mm. They are toll free. Zero eight hundred nine hundred one one zero. One one zero. You can you can call that number mm. and then we also have uh um call centers mm. zero two zero mm. nine two six mm. seven zero four seven yeah then we have zero two zero nine two six seven zero four eight so that's number start uh, it ends with four seven four eight mm. and four nine mm. so if you have the number again let me mention it again mm. zero two zero nine two six seven zero four seven mm. Four eight four nine. Mm. Then we have WhatsApp contacts. Yeah. That's quickly, yeah. Yeah, so that's zero five five two nine nine mm. quadruple zero. Mm. Zero five five two nine nine zero 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 zero. Mm. So you can contact us. Right. There. Okay. So I say a big thank you to Felicia Omotayo. Uh, Usu <laughs> and indeed Patrick uh, Frimpong Danso. Uh, they are from the uh, EVA technical team at the Ghana Radio Authority working us through the certified invoicing system. That's the EVAT uh, for short and all that you need to know about it and how to go about it if you uh, want to get roped in. Uh, they've started with 50 and they want to finish this by 2024 where they would uh, rope in the entire country uh, so that uh, we'd have uh, the, the, the money that we need to run our nation and to develop. Well, we say big thanks to our sponsors, Ghana Renew Authority, Goel Company Limited, Serene Insurance, Ghana Link Network Services, and indeed Meridian Port Services. Remember, the show is powered by the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority, GPH. God willing, next week, we shall bounce back with another wonderful edition of the show. And remember to watch the abridged version on GTV on Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. My name is Kennedy Mona. God willing, we'll see you next week. Wish you a super evening, and we say keep watching the rest of our programs. Have a super week ahead, and good evening. <laughs>